So I have the honor of presenting our first uh, reception speaker. Uh, she is a phenomenal social media sensation, uh, not only in the United States, but in China. Uh, in fact, she just recently spoke at Alibaba's philanthropy forum, where she was uh, mobbed by a large group of young Chinese folks uh, desperately seeking uh, a photograph, uh, and I'm sure an autograph as well. Uh, a selfie, what we call a zipai. Uh, I also, uh, Jessica actually has been, uh, Jessica Beinecke is our speaker for this afternoon. Um, I believe her Chinese name is Bai Jie. La 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 la, no that's not, that's not the last name. Um, she is a phenomenal young woman who was ranked uh, one of 50, top 50 on uh, Foreign Policy Magazine's uh, Pacific Index of people who are shaping the US-China relationship. Um, she has a series of uh, web uh, videos where she teaches Chinese students American slang, like, what's up? And uh, American students Chinese slang, like, uh, which is like, whoa, you're super cool. Uh, I personally uh, have learned several Chinese words from Jessica. Um, the word for duck lips, which is what you see a lot of young people do in selfies. Like this, this, you know, it's a do do zui. So I learned that from her, thankfully. But uh, she is an extraordinary young woman, and we're very, very pleased to have her today. Um, her Crazy Fresh Chinese series, her Bai Ji La 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 and Oh My God May You have garnered over 70 million views and 1.5 billion social media impressions. So we're very honored to have her today. And with that, let's invite Jessica to the stage. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. You're really Chinese teachers, hi, how are you? <laughs> I am, uh, you guys do a, such a much better job actually teaching Chinese from start to finish. We make it, you know, fun and, and, and enjoyable, but you're not going to get fluent from our videos, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, uh, hi, I'm Jessica Beinecke, Chinese name Bai Jie, Bai Si de Bai Jie, Bai de Jie. Um, I uh, was inspired, before I get into my whole sort of story here, I was inspired by one of the morning um, speakers' presentations of all of the world leaders who started to dress like each other. I think everything I do, we bring it down from the government sort of top level environmental stuff down to like people to people exchange and that's sort of where we operate. So I wanted to show you how people dress like each other on a people to people level. Oops. There's the American phenomenon of the Timberlake Spears, you know, event in the early 2000s, you know, that doesn't really happen too much in America, but in China, couples love to dress like each other. And I've tried to convince my boyfriend over and over, like, it's a thing, it's cool, and it hasn't worked yet. So um, he carries my purse now, though, which is a very, you know, Chinese thing to do for your girlfriend. Um, so I just wanted to gather a... Um, troll Dr. Wasserstrom's, you know, presentation real quick and show you on a people-to-people -people level that this happens a lot, all the time, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> in China. Uh, so I, um, uh, that's just one of the many fun, goofy, creative things that come out of popular culture, internet culture, young people's sort of interests in China that I think all of your students, especially high school age, show of hands, how many high school students, or high school teachers are here? So mostly, and then where's the middle school represent? Hey, middle school. That's, where, that's tough. Um, <laughs> that's a tough age. <laughs> I presented at middle school classes. Whew. You guys got your work cut out for you. So. Um, before, again, before I get into my personal story, I really wanted to share with you some stats that weren't, um, I'm coming, kind of coming back high level here, some stats that I think you're going to be really inspired by that make your job um, sound even more important to help many more Americans start to understand China be and how crucial it is because mutual understanding, as we all talked about this morning, between the United States and China is just so important and it will also help us address world problems that we cannot solve on our own. 
unfortunately, there's this huge gap between what young Chinese people understand about America and what young Americans understand about China. Um, there's this, I mean, from everything, every level, from language to our way of life and everything. So uh, there are more than 300,000 Chinese students enrolled in American colleges and universities right now. And up until recently, only fewer than 100,000 Americans were studying abroad in China. Um, when it comes to each other's languages, there's an even bigger gap. I'm sure you've heard there are 300 to 400 million Chinese uh, uh, English learners, which is you know more than there are people in America. And there are only 200,000 Americans learning Mandarin. And in China, English is mandatory between K and 12, so that makes it easy. Um, but that's why in 2009, President Obama announced this national goal of seeing 100,000 American students studying abroad in China. That goal was met in 2014. The, I'm sure you're familiar with the 100,000 Strong Foundation. They really drove to make that happen. And just one year later in 2015, President Xi and President Obama got together again to announce their next initiative to um, see one million American students studying uh, Mandarin by 2020, which is a big, big goal to meet. <laughs> so that's why I'm here today, uh, not only to give a shout out to US China Strong, who is our big supporter behind Crazy Fresh Chinese, but also to share with you all how all of your students, whether or not you are personally a Chinese language teacher, how you and your students every day can learn some Chinese every day in class, which really makes getting to know China a lot more tangible, a lot more fun. Um, but also how your students can start global movements on their own. Um, I started a similar uh, journey 10 years ago. That's when I personally started to learn Chinese. Uh, because I wanted to be this global citizen. I wanted to have an international impact. Uh, but 10 years ago, I couldn't speak Chinese. I had never left America. Uh, I really didn't understand like the essence, like what is a global citizen? So um, what did I understand? I am from a very small town. Uh, I grew up in Pickerington, Ohio, uh, with about a population. Ohio, and the represent. Uh, a couple of Ohioans, all right. What, what part of Ohio are you from? I know. I'm, I'm Columbus, but not Columbus. Yeah. Ta are you Ohio? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait. Well, OH kind of. <laughs> um, so, yep, that's me on the farm, literally. Um, and Pickerington, Ohio, small town of about 10,000 people, which is the same amount of people who take the Shanghai subway every minute. So, um, I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be that person taking the subway. I wanted to you know, live in a big city, speak another language, you know. So fast forward, 26, uh, 2006, that's when I started uh, studying at Ohio University, not the Ohio State, unfortunately. Yes, I was down in Athens, Ohio, which is in the middle of nowhere again, and I certainly didn't feel like a global citizen yet. So I decided to learn Chinese. And at that time, 2006, everyone was like, you gotta learn Chinese. If you want a job after college, you better learn Chinese. More people speak Chinese and they speak English. You know, like, get a Chinese boyfriend, learn Chinese. <laughs> so I at least signed up to learn Chinese. I was like, I don't know who, you know. Um, but uh, everybody was just had this fever of like, you know, take Chinese, learn a brick language, right? So I had a wonderful first Chinese professor. Her name was Zhu Laoshi. And um, she just made this long, this lifelong impression on me to work really hard and honestly to honor her and so that she didn't lose face because I really started off as a really bad student. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, by the time I was studying Chinese for about a year, I was ready to study abroad, go to Beijing and Hangzhou, two massive cities, and I was like, this is my ticket. I'm gonna, this is like my global citizen ticket. Let's go. Um, Unfortunately, there were a few things I didn't know how to do before getting to China. From a small town, I had never taken a subway before. I had never taken a public bus before. I had never taken a taxi before. <laughs> so I was figuring out how to do all of these things in Chinese. 
I had never eaten street food, f- street food before. So that was like the highlight of figuring out things I didn't understand. I was eating jian bing guo zi and yang rou chua like every single day. And you know, freshman 15, thanks China. Um, uh, but even though I was confused by the public transportation and essentially just the way of life in China, what really helped me become the global citizen I'd always dreamed of becoming was actually living with what I considered to be global citizens. My Chinese roommates, at the top there's Lina from Beijing and bottom is Luoyan, we're at um, Westlake in Hangzhou. They really taught me what it was like to be a global citizen because we did everything together in Chinese. We brushed our teeth together, we went to breakfast together, we went to the library together, we went to Starbucks together. They taught me how to order everything from a xing bing le to a dou nai na tie, and which is frappuccino or a soy latte. And uh, We talked about cute boys together because we were 19. And we talked about our families together, literally everything that goes in to being a young Chinese person, they took me by the hand and showed me everything about that. So it was thanks to their generosity and to their um, kindness that I truly understood what it was like to become a global citizen, which is to have global friends. And that's the goal of learning these languages and learning about new countries. and learning these new cultures is putting them into actions and developing this people-to-people exchange, creating friendships at a young age because these are the future leaders who will establish the future of US-China relations, right? Um, And it's thanks to them that I finally figured out what that meant. So upon graduation, I started to think, gosh, what can I do to help more Chinese and more American students who would like to be global citizens become that. So it all started at my kitchen table five years ago, uh, actually five years ago to the day last Wednesday. So this is a really cool way to celebrate that uh, little anniversary of making video blogs. I hosted them in Chinese and I taught American slang and culture to a Chinese audience on Chinese social media. I made them every single day and I posted them on Sina Weibo. Um, this was 2011, so it was a very new thing for a La Wai, a foreigner, to be making. Uh, I see a head nod. Yep, you're La Wai. <laughs> a, uh, or what was that phrase earlier today? It was a, uh, a barbarian. Um, I was like, ooh, that's a fun start. Uh, so I want, I think young global citizens, especially college age, high school age, understand that just being a student in a class, learning a language can kind of be a little bit dull, but making friends, using what you learn in class is the fun part. So I really wanted the daily videos I started to make, um, make our viewers feel like they were getting the language and cultural sort of skills that they needed to go out and make those friends and make those connections and not sound like they just learned the language from a textbook and use it like, hello, I want to be your friend, is a little bit very forward to say to an American. Like, okay, (laughs) I bet you do. So, um, and that's how global citizens make new friends. It's relating to new friends, new people from the context of their culture, from the context of their language. And I think that helps everybody involved kind of grow together. So after posting the first episode, which taught our viewers how to use the phrase, OMG, Tiana. Uh, I remember getting really excited clicking the refresh button on my, that's the very first one, oof, baby face. Um, No wrinkles, this is nice. Um, So I remember hitting the refresh button and seeing like click 300 followers, click 700 followers, oh my god, click 1,000 followers. Within the first hour of posting that first episode, we had 3,000 Weibo followers. I had no idea where this was coming from, and I certainly didn't know what to talk about next. So rather than dictating the content myself, I turned to our ever-growing group of uh, Weibo followers and asked them, how What does everybody want to study next week? And the comments came flowing in. They're like, Bai Jie, talk about Mexican food. Bai Jie, talk about, you know, 
going on a date. Baijie, uh, talk about college life in America. Baijie, talk about cappuccinos. I love coffee. I drink it every day. Talk about all sorts of coffee. Um, so all of a sudden, this little video blog quickly became something completely unexpected. I knew that every day if I just took the time to answer a few of the English and culture questions that our growing number of Weibo followers in China had, they would slowly start to get the global citizen skills they'd need to start making friends who speak English and start becoming the type of people they want to be. They want to make these friends. They want to be able to communicate in a way that is you know, fluent and, and conversational. So um, to report again, I'm very excited to tell you that within five years, we've generated 70 million video views in China and a billion and a half social media impressions on Sina Weibo. Um, so I couldn't stop there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I couldn't stop there. Um, so I started to think, how can I help more Americans learn Chinese? And that's where you guys come in. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> we teach Americans. Um, so we started Crazy Fresh Chinese three years ago with the help of US China Strong. And um, we produce daily video blogs that teach um, Chinese slang, one Chinese slang term or phrase every single day. And we've been doing it for three years. So there's hundreds of videos for you guys to use on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Don't worry, we'll send you a special email about it. Um, so right now, I'd love to show you a mashup of OMG Mayu videos, which was the first video we made for five years in China, which will transition into the highlights from Crazy Fresh Chinese and then a couple more fun videos. Oh, oh yeah, that's me. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about this part. <laughs> um, I was very, um, over, the few, over the past few years, we've worked um, sort of, we've come back to a higher level. This was at the 2013 US-China consultation on people-to-people -people exchange. Um, which was set up by then Secretary um, Hil of State Hillary Clinton and Madame Liu Yandong, which is the uh, beautiful Chinese woman in the, um, she's one of the vice premiers of China in the, in the blue coat, which she wasn't mentioned this morning. I was like, what about Madame Liu? She's so cool. Um, but yeah, that's also Secretary Kerry trying to understand Mandarin as I, <laughs> as I showed the videos. He loved it. He had a, it was, it was like gonna be my Facebook picture forever. Anyway. Um, so, oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Yeah, Crazy Fresh Chinese and we can watch, whoops, we can watch that now. Is that you guys or, okay. Millions of Chinese are picking up American slang thanks to what's happening in this Washington DC apartment. Meet Jessica Beinecke, China's newest English language star. <laughs> Veronica. <laughs> I work and I study in Beijing, but recently I was in Hubei. I know, Baijie will come, I'm so excited! We are never ever ever getting back together Very like a Taylor Swift Wanna sing it together? We are never ever ever getting back together Uh, 
。如果我是你的男友，永远不会让你走。The OMG, uh, helps me learn the word swag, swaggy, like the Bieber song, swag, swag, swag on you. Hi everybody, I'm holding a panda. How do you say it? Junjun. Junjun. Junjun is so cute and cuddly and huggable and so fluffy. Hey, what's up? I'm Bai Jie. I'm sure you've all made this face before. So how do you say duck face in Chinese? Tu tu zui. What's your favorite Chinese word? Shishang Daoran, fashionista. Hey, what's your favorite Chinese word? Bar. Bar. What does that mean? Swag. That's what I got, y'all. Why is that your favorite word? Uh, I like it because you can call anything a cow and it's still cool. Oh, nice! So, you like the Chinese word? No. No. What is that? It, what, which don't have? Don't have. Which, why is that your favorite? Because I don't have the same word. Because I don't have my mind just exploded. <laughs> I just visited students learning Chinese in Ohio and students learning English in Beijing and Hunan. It's like the most cross-cultural thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Oh, what is your favorite English word? Caddy, what's your favorite English word? Uh, my English word actually is not an English word. Oh. Uh, Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata! <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Can we sing it together? Uh, yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Ain't hey, no passing yes, grace. It means, it means no worries for the, the rest, rest of your days. days. It's not problem me. Hakuna，Matata。Thank you。你好。你好。你叫什么名字？呃，我哈冰。我哈冰。Hey，what's up？Hey，what's up？What's up，man？Oh，right。What's your name？啊，my name is Michael。你喜欢中国学生什么问题？哦，我喜欢beatbox
compares to the invention of the cupcake. How do you say cupcake in Chinese? 杯子蛋糕 杯子蛋糕杯子蛋糕杯子蛋糕 杯子 means cup and 蛋糕 means cake. 杯子蛋糕 Okay, if you learned it, prove it. Send me an Instagram video or a Vine and tell me what is your favorite flavor of 杯子蛋糕. Mine is chocolate cake, chocolate icing, double chocolate, 杯子蛋糕. <laughs> okay, bye. All right. Episode two. There will be a test. Okay. Can you help me push play? <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Bai Jie. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know what? I kind of want to be famous. <laughs> I just got to figure out how to make that happen. How do you say famous in Chinese? Yo Ming. Yo Ming. Yo Ming. Yo Ming. Yo means to have and Ming means name. So you have a name. You're famous. Yo Ming. <laughs> Okay, did you learn it? Prove it. Send me an Instagram video or a Vine and tell me what you would like to do to become Yo Ming. <laughs> okay, bye. And finally, where? It's a. Hey, what's up? I'm Bai Jie. I love my friends. I do gonna put that out there but sometimes they get a little nosy and I have to tell them look mind your own business how do you say mind your own business in Chinese Guan hao ni zi ji de shi 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 Guan hao means to take good care of ni zi ji your de shi your stuff your things, your events. 你自己的事. Take good care of your own stuff. Is how you say mind your own business in Chinese. <laughs> I love that. 管好你自己的事. 管好你自己的事. Okay, did you learn it? Prove it. Send me an Instagram video or a Vine. And in your best mean girls impression, say, 管好你自己的事. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, don't forget them. Okay, guys. <laughs> That's so useful in so many reasons. Okay. Um, so what I'd love to um, uh, suggest very strongly to all of you uh, are these six uh, steps um, that you could uh, use to interact with us. We love getting content from classrooms, from students, from teachers, uh, in class, after class, you name it. We have hundreds and hundreds of videos you don't have to use the video of the day uh, but if you create an instagram for your class you watch a daily crazy fresh chinese video weekly however you'd like to start tiptoe in um, make a video in class of maybe the student who learned it the quickest or you know somebody who volunteers post it to instagram and tag us we will repost you and um there's so many classes from western wisconsin to down in texas to out in Massachusetts, I know Western Wisconsin is like, how are you studying Chinese right now? <laughs> they had a China dress up day and two girls dressed up as Baijia. It was like, oh, my heart. Um, so other classes will definitely be inspired to do the same if they see like this big California contingency, like, whoa, we got to, you know, live up to what California is up to. So just a suggestion, we'll send out this email. I would just love to share as many videos as we get in. We will make it a part of our, um, uh, our videos as we go forward. So we'd love to see your students learning Chinese, and I'm sure it would make them feel proud too. So. Um, what I want to leave you with going forward are two things. Um, I think it's really exciting taking the content that you learned this morning um, from Chinese government to Chinese economy to uh, Chinese pop culture to Chinese language. Um, starting a blog as a young person is a really empowering thing to do. Um, it starts you to, it helps you create your own voice. It helps you learn things at a deeper level than just taking a test. So um, I want to share with you some tips that I've learned over the past five years in making a video blog or making any type of blog. 
So um, first, it's establishing a format. Is it a written blog? Is it a picture-based blog, a video blog? Um, thinking about what you want to talk about, whether it's some topics from this morning or Chinese food or Chinese, you know, any type of trend you could really uh, tackle. As a young person, I'm sure, you know, basketball in China is a really big um, topic that a lot of young people care about. So um, it's also making sure you make it fast. A lot of the things that we create are one minute long because everybody's <laughs> attention spans are just shortening and you know, you got these seven second vines and a five second this. So um, making it fast and digestible is, um, makes it easy to tackle within a classroom too. Nobody needs to write this like 10 paragraph blog post. Um, oops. Be cowpool, which means be dependable. Um, set up a time frame that you post your video blog. So if you set up a six week project where it's, you know, post one video blog per week, or even if it's just a hobby that a student starts to do it for the year, um, that is very important to learn how to be dependable. You set a time that you post and then you start to gain followers. Um, it's also not, whoops, not about you. Uh, you know, as much as we love to watch people's cat videos and bloggers who turn on the video and say, here's what I had for lunch, um, picking a topic and sort of discussing something that helps the viewers gain some knowledge is um, going to be a really cool skill for students to learn. So um, another great thing, a lot of you are high school teachers. Um, a lot of your students, I'm sure, are starting to think, what can I put on my resume to get into college? Um, one thing I love to tell our college age students is that you don't need to s wait for an internship to come your way or try to get something that you might not end up getting. You can start a blog today. You can cr start to be a self-starter, create a portfolio that shows that you um, are a go-getter, you're a good communicator, you create content and, and um, you sort of have this self-starter mentality. Um, it helps you also become an expert. You know, people think that I'm kind of like a blogging, video blog sort of uh, English and Chinese slang expert just because I make a video every day. <laughs> so it really establishes you as um, an expert on the topic that you choose, um, whether it's from topics you learned this morning to more of a people-to-people -people level cultural um, topic. So. Also establishing skills, understanding that you need new skills to make a video blog. Maybe you don't know how to make videos, or maybe you need to learn picture editing skills or things like that. Um, now is a great time in high school to kind of teach yourself the um, you know, iMovie or other free um, programming things that if you wanted to make a video blog about your journey of learning Chinese, um, now is the perfect time to do it. So it also helps you establish your brand. If you are a funny person, if you're a serious person, as a high school student, if you love um, comparing, for instance, you, everyone was looking for a resource of comparing American uh, political systems to Chinese political systems, how cool would it be to watch a high schooler break it down for you? So I really hope that there's an opportunity. I saw a head nod back there, yeah. Um, I really think that there's an opportunity for your students to become um, sort of leading video bloggers in this space as they learn about China. Um, so it helps you follow your passion too. A lot of times I wish that I had been introduced to Chinese language as a younger person because I would have been able to accomplish so much more. So um, that really helps people identify what they're passionate about, whether it's about policy or you know history or it's on the language side. Um, so so yeah, I we can open up and discuss if, if we have time, right? And we'll send it, I want to put a special ep email together to send this to you guys, so. Yeah. I, think, I think if you have any questions now, questions for her, please feel free to ask, okay? Because she flew all the way here from Washington, D.C., just for this, <laughs> so yes. Mine's a silly question, but when I was looking at the agenda to attend this conference, I showed some of my students from China about you, and they're like, oh my god, she's so famous. Mrs. Tanaka, can you bring us a t-shirt with her picture or a poster? Are you selling anything <laughs> afterwards? <laughs> no, Maybe I'm I should be. They wanted me to get t-shirts with your 
We're yeah, we're pretty well known in China. Um, no, I don't have. Really yeah, don't have anything. <laughs> I they asked um, me to bring them back something. So well, I'll get something. I uh, we can take a selfie. How's that? Okay. Yeah, that'll make. I mean, help I up your okay. street cred. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who else had a? Cr I saw a hand go up over here. Uh, Bai means white, and jie means kind of pure. I, so <laughs> I asked my, um, it's not Snow White, and it's not White Sister. Uh, <laughs> uh, I asked Zhu Laoshi, my first Chinese language professor, I want a um, Chinese name that sounds like my English name, Jessica Bainiki. Bainiki Bai, Jessica Jie, Bai Jie. So a lot of people assume, like, you named yourself White Sister? Why would you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> it sounds like my English name. So I can't, I can't shake Baijia now. Uh -huh. And so it's nice to somebody then. Oh, no. White man. <laughs> yeah, mm -mm. That's funny. You should just do it anyway. We have a question back here. So I oh. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Billy Lee. I'm really impressed by your presentation, and um, you're a terrific in building friendship. And I think I just want to ask you that uh, you seem to be extremely successful in China. But do you, do you, would you have a different approach in making friendship in China versus making friendship in the United States? It, do you mean in video blogs or just making friends? I, well, yes. To, uh, yes, much different because there's just such uh, a, f a just crazed interest in learning English in China and not so much in America, unfortunately. So we're trying to change that, and um, that's really why um, I thought it would be such a great opportunity to talk to so many teachers, because you truly are the ones who changed that. I was really inspired by, I don't know if anybody was tuning into the DNC last night, but um, former President Clinton talking about, like, these speeches are easy, but actually implementing the change and doing the work is the hard part, and that's what you guys do. So I thought, gosh, it would really be worth it to talk to so many teachers who take the, who choose to show videos like Crazy Fresh Chinese and inspire their students, even if they're not Chinese teachers, to kind of, you know, approach um, gaining that communication skill, you know, and so, yeah. So, oh, thank you for sharing your, your time. Um, and from... Talking as a middle-aged, old, old school white dude, um, who I the shift in monetizing s something like this, or how did you know that you? Because it's hard for me to connect with this. I'm really trying um, because this is this is where I need to mentally be, and how I just have a flurry of, of questions, but to pick just one of them, if I'm talking with my middle school kids, which I connect with on a person-to-person -person basis, but their lives are more in the social realm, I mean the online realm, and then they're thinking about a future a career, how did you transform your passion into a career? I think that's where my question is really going so when I talk with my middle school kids, I can say, here is a possible path. Well, it's going to be obviously um, different for everybody. Um, this is authentic to me. I uh, uh, started in you know five years ago when Chinese social media was very different than what it is today. So there are a lot of factors um, that go into why this is my career. I'm a very independently driven person who has always wanted to be a business owner. This is my production company, and we have since diversified our production um, offerings. So these are two of the video blogs I make. Um, we made an environmental video blog for the Paulson Institute that in, um, uh, promotes 
uh, it sort of, sorry, I'm thinking in Chinese, Huanbao. It promotes like environmentally friendly um, habits among young Chinese people, which is super important as we talked about this morning. Um, so that's sort of how I've developed it. It's a sponsored content model. Um, if you're wondering what the business model was. Um, so as middle schoolers, I think um, just understanding that having global skills like speaking Mandarin will help you um, fully go after what you discover your passion to be. I certainly didn't know what my career was gonna be when I was a middle schooler. Um, I just knew that I liked marching band. And, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure that's changing. I'm sure that everybody's starting to think about that at a much younger age. But um, I think creating globally minded people who can then make those decisions for themselves once they get to college is, is in my opinion, the goal. Um, and learning Chinese through this way, like promoting video blogging as a career, I don't know. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, um, I was wondering if you had any suggestions for some type of um, social media um, outlet that could connect. I teach in Hawaii, and um, w you know you can't do. You know, there's issues of like privacy and some things. Like last year, I was trying to, or for years, I was thinking, okay, how can I get my students to maybe connect with, make Facebook friends with maybe students in India or China or Japan or whatever, and have them connect and learn from each other. Um, Last year I found something called, or experimented with something called pen pal schools. Um, they get a friend in some other part of the world. It didn't turn out to be as, when I told my students about it, they were really excited. What, we get a friend in another part of the world, we get to talk to each other. Um, but it didn't work out as well, it wasn't as social and they couldn't just like bounce ideas and learn from each other as much. Mm. I was wondering if you had any ideas on some type of a network that might be able to br like allow for just social, maybe, an slash educational opportunities between um, students in Hawaii, California, wherever, and over there to allow like open communication, dialogue. What do you teach? I teach world history. Luckily, I um, don't have too much um, eyes over my shoulder. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So I, I have a pretty wide um, degree of latitude in how I teach it and what I choose to teach, so. Nice. Um, uh, I have a suggestion, and this is probably um, here's one way. You can kind of hack it. Um, make a friend who speaks Chinese, open up a Weibo account, and they can help you um, perhaps link up with a school or some other sort of youth group over in China who would want to connect high school students. Yeah, I mean, this is like a dream sort of scenario of so many Chinese high school students making friends in America. I mean, it's just, it could be so great. Um, I think Weibo is the best way to do it because they can access it. It's W-E-I-B-O, Sina Weibo, S-I-N-A, Sina Weibo. Um, but again, it's in Chinese, the platform. Um, so I would suggest um, finding if there's a Chinese language teacher in school or a friend of yours um, perhaps could help you sort of um, get your bearings, and once you kind of learn the different buttons, it feels like Facebook, so you don't need to know the Chinese. Um, so I think it's possible. I think that would be great. I, th I think Sina Weibo is much easier to use than, than people make mm -hmm. it out to be, so um, connecting that way would be a good idea, but um, I'm, I, th I wanna look into how schools connect, how high schools connect and kind of share their student experiences. So maybe we can include that in the email that we send around because I know um, US China Strong has um, resources and suggestions for that. I just don't know personally. Um, so I have a question. It seems like your China brand and your appeal to Chinese youth is like really big, um, but it, in comparison to the US, it's not as big. So I'm curious as to how you're building your brand to get more American kids excited about studying Chinese as much as Chinese kids are excited about studying English. So this is one of my biggest ways to build the Crazy Fresh Chinese brand is to take it to the teachers because this is one of the biggest ways to get Crazy Fresh Chinese and the concept of inserting one Chinese word into your daily life um, as much as possible. So I do a lot of school visits. I do a lot, I'm based in New York City, so. <laughs> You know, California school visits are, are kind of a kind of a struggle, but um, we do a lot of visits and um, meet with as many classrooms as we can. We Skype, uh, but there is a Skype 
um, sort of criteria that you have to make. You have to make 10 student videos and you earn the Skype. <laughs> so that increases the you know, interactive content that we get and incentivizes that. Um, but that's definitely something that I love to do, take you know, a half hour in Skype with the class, even if I don't have the opportunity to visit physically, um, Skyping's a, a great way to do that. I'd love to do that with anybody. It's um it's a it's a that was a promotional event that we did um, but I can include that in the email and, and send it your way for sure. Okay, so um, a small group of us are from a K eight school that's a Chinese immersion school and so all the middle schoolers learn um, Mandarin starting sixth grade but they learn um, Cantonese in the elementary school mm. and um, so <laughs> you know just wanting to teach them to be global citizens um, they. You know, they're, they're put in the school. They didn't get to choose the language. Their parents chose it for them, really. And so they, they learned the language going up into middle school. And so kind of by the time they're in middle school, it, it's not so cool anymore. And they get to go to China in eighth grade. And so just really wanting them to, um, going to China is the exciting trip, but wanting them to use the language and make it um, um, important to them and exciting is a challenge for our, our teachers, I guess. And so just any advice. I mean, I, I love what you said today, and I would love for you to be able to speak to the students and tell them the same thing. Mm. So I was just thinking about earning your Skype. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please do. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, a lot of teachers do say that they use Crazy Fresh Chinese for that reason, to kind of just infuse a fun, high energy thing at the top of the class to get the day going. Um, I mean, I, I feel you. My dad was like, learned Spanish like my whole life and that never happened because I did not want to learn Spanish <laughs> so there is a point of just sort of authenticity to the person I'm a big believer in like you know following your own path but I know a lot of parents and a lot of students are, are put in classes like that and which I think are so cool um, and I love immersion schools so I'd love to get involved in any way that I can um, with crazy fresh Chinese in your school for sure because a lot of our, I make sure our content stays super wholesome and um, and doesn't like, you know, we have a lot of young students, so um, I make sure that it's crazy fresh and clean. <laughs> yeah. Um. I started to watch OMG maybe four years ago in 2012 when I came to the U.S. And I have been showing these videos to my students. Mm. For some reason, I don't know why. I didn't know crazy fresh Chinese, but I know it today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm just uh, curious. Uh, when you posted your videos on Xinlang Weibo, why didn't you post them on Chinese YouTube like Youku or Tudo or some other website? Um, you know, we decided I had a really good relationship with Xinlang Weibo. So they had they used to have a video platform that then got shut down. And now we put our videos up on Miao Pai, which is also a Weibo product. Um, as you know, so many of the Chinese social media products are segmented. You know, there's not only just Youku Tudo, there's uh, QQ video, there's, you know, uh, I mean, endless amounts of, and then Xianda Yo Drip, I think a Dribble live video. So it's just like endless amounts and endless locations. It's not just YouTube <coughs> Vimeo, there's, you know, a lot of options. So the relationship that we formed with Xinlang Weibo is the reason why we put it there. And now Miao Pai is the only video platform that automatically plays on Xinlang Weibo. It's very much like Facebook videos. So that's why we've chosen Miao Pai. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it and hope to hear from you soon.